Okay, so what were the two numbers that you found that made the product negative 42, but the summation negative 1? Yes, okay. So, is that okay? Because negative, a positive gives me a negative. 6 and 7 make 42. Negative 7, positive 6, negative 1, right? Okay, these two are going to replace your B values. So your three terms, one, two, three, three terms are going to become four, and then you're going to split in GCF, okay? So you go your A times C, your B value. Once you find these two numbers, you're going to make your three-term trinomial become four terms. And with those four terms, when you write it, you're going to split it. And GCF. Okay, all right, so what does that mean? First term and last term, leave it alone, bring it down. You're replacing the B term with the two values that you got off the diamond method or magic X or whatever from the factory. Okay, so instead of this negative 1X, I'm replacing these two. Now, it doesn't matter which one goes first, but I kind of know that 2 and 6. I can factor 2 out, and 7 and 21, right, multiples. Um, if you did the 7 and the 6 switch, then you'll still get, you'll still end up with the same answer. Okay. Okay. Split GCF. So what is divisible into 2 and 6? 2. How many x's? 2 x's, 1 x, take 1 out. What am I left with? x plus 3, and double check. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 3 is 6x. Okay, if you do this correctly, this should always match. Once you GCF, they should always match. If they don't match, you did something incorrectly, you wrote it wrong, you messed up the sign. Um, you got to go back and double check your work. Okay, and so if I look at negative 7x minus 21, what can I factor out in terms of negative 7 and negative 21? A negative 7. If this term here is negative, pull it out always. And then what's divisible into 7 and 21? 7, and so double check. Set negative 7 times x is negative 7x. Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. So you could always verify your work through the distributive property. Okay, this is now how you grab your two binomials. You essentially GCF again. And so look, these two GCFs are going to form one binomial, 2x minus 7. The repetitive, this one forms the other one, binomial, x plus 3, and that's it. Okay, now to solve it, some of you were a little sketchy on the ZPP. The way you solve, and then eventually when some of you kind of refreshed your memory, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I switch. All right, the zero product property states that you can set what's inside the binomial equal to zero. And so you solve them like two separate little equations. So 2x minus 7 is equal to 0, x plus 3 is equal to 0. So here, inverse operate. So some of you realize, oh, I just switched the signs. Okay, but when you have a binomial where the coefficient of x or the variable is not 1, we'll solve it as a two-step, but afterwards let me show you what the shortcut is or the pattern. Okay. You get 7 halves or 3.5. Okay, what's the pattern? Your numerator is going to be the opposite of negative 7, positive 7. Your denominator is going to be that coefficient too. That's it. Because of inverse operations, what do you have to do? You have to take the negative 7 <laughs> constant over the equal sign, so it's going to inverse operate, which means you're going to add. So that's why you go opposite, positive 7. You're going to divide the coefficient of x, and so 2 becomes a denominator, and there's your 2. 
So this is solving, if they're asking you to solve, you have the zero product property, ZPP, but if they're asking you to factor, oh, I know my answers are here, but all right, I'll write them. This is factored form, the two binomials, and so seven halves, oh, wait, wait, negative three. So it's now part of the